Welcome, thank you for joining us. Today we are talking with Professor Helen Ward about the importance of community engagement in outbreak response, including early findings from work in the public around COVID-19. Helen, thank you for joining us. What is community engagement and why is it so important during an outbreak? Thanks, Sabina. Well, in previous epidemics such as Ebola or flu, it became clear that widespread action was needed across communities to, to implement the control that we need, but that doesn't happen automatically. In an emergency like this, as professionals, we need to work to build strong relationships with these local communities so that we can work in a kind of partnership. And the WHO recommends community engagement as a very early part of the strategy for our response. So when they reviewed outbreaks of Ebola and SARS, they found that the absence of effective community engagement in some areas really undermined effective response. They needed to build trust, and if you lose that early on, it's really difficult to win that back. So in Ebola, for example, local communities in some areas didn't trust these external people, the national and international responders, when they came in, and rumours started spreading about what these people were doing. And that really delayed their ability to implement some of the key changes in burial practices, for example. So how is this relevant to the current coronavirus pandemic? Well, we know that to control this coronavirus, we need to have widespread changes in behaviour, changes in how we mix with each other, whether we follow advice about hand washing to reduce transmission, self-isolating if we have symptoms and so on. But we also know that a lot of people don't or can't follow that advice. For people to be able to do that, they need to trust the message and the messenger. And they need to have the opportunity and the resources to make changes. And to build that trust, we really need to use existing communities and networks, reach out to local community leaders, whether they're church leaders, organisations, neighbourhood groups, and even online influencers to mobilise support networks and reach reach out to people but it's not just a one way we're telling communities what to do we also need to listen to communities and find out what mechanisms and routes they think are useful so last week in my team we um, did a public engagement exercise and we got feedback online from over 400 people in the UK and these people came up with some excellent ideas and insights so for example we asked about self-isolation and while 90% of respondents said they'd be willing to self-isolate in line with government advice, only 60% said they thought they'd be able to. And the constraints that they described included the practical issues about caring responsibilities, small living conditions and so on, um, and financial loss. But some were really stressed that they needed to be convinced by the logic of self-isolation and they needed to trust the message. So... As we move to these more stringent control measures, we need to work hard to convince communities that our messages are correct and to build trust and as well as providing practical support. And one of the few good things about this outbreak is how many communities have spontaneously mobilised support networks to help neighbours and vulnerable people. What approaches do you and others use to engage communities and to best inform strategies? I think that's a really important question. Communities, there are many of them, many different groups within the population. And the first thing is really to identify who you're trying to reach, who these communities are. And we often use a, either a formal or informal stakeholder mapping. We find out who the key groups are, identify those that are most likely to be missed, for example. And in the recent epidemics, we've been actually asking the public to suggest who we need to be reaching out to and how to do that. We have a network of resources and links with members of the public, with patient groups, with charities working on health and related issues. And we've reached out to them to ask them to help us with this. But we can also work with local authorities, with faith organisations, with schools. There's a whole range of ways that you can actually find out who these groups are. We particularly want to reach out to those who are less likely to be heard or seldom heard groups, groups such as the homeless, people who have very few resources and are often missed by these kind of activities. And so we already have networks of those and we have networks of young people, not necessarily 
school related or college related to try and get their input because often community engagement is seen as older people but we do use this range of groups that we have to approach but also a range of methods we use online engagement we use emails phone calls obviously we normally use face-to-face but not in the current outbreak thank you for taking the time to speak with us today